to another month of Tundatula Safari Science. This month I'm going to be focusing on the various digestive systems that you find within the herbivorous animals that we share this environment with. And in order to do that, we have to have a look at what they leave behind. As some of you may know, there's two distinct digestive systems that you find within the herbivorous mammalian species of the Greater Kruger National Park. And those two distinct digestive systems would be that of the ruminants, things like impala or kudu or nyala, and the hindgut fermenters, or things like elephants, hippos, rhinos. And this is a huge subject to dive into. So I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet today, and hopefully I'll be able to teach you a thing or two. I'm sure you've heard it before. You know that saying that cows have four stomachs? Well, it's not entirely wrong, but it's rather four chambers as opposed to four stomachs. With the first three chambers, the rumen, the reticulum, and the omasum, creating sort of a storage chamber, a place where microbes can ferment the food at length. And the last chamber, the abomasum, is where actual stomach and uh, acidic digestion takes place. I'm sure you've also heard of the term chewing the cud. You know when an animal is just sitting under a tree, in the shade, enjoying the view, and just chewing. Well, that's half the benefit of being a ruminant. You see beforehand, what that animal had done is, early on in the day, gone out and quickly chewed and eaten food and swallowed it, and that food's gone down into its rumen, where it sits. And as soon as the animal finds a little bit of time, maybe during the heat of the day when nobody likes to do anything, it moves into the shade, finds a nice comfy spot, and it regurgitates that food back into its mouth, where it's then able to chew it at length. And so the animal chews and chews, and this assists hugely in the digestion of the food and also the assimilation of nutrients coming out of that food. Once the animal's chewed it at length, it re-swallows the food, and from there it moves into the reticulum. This is the next chamber, which is very similar to the omasum, and this is where millions of microbes start to work on that food and start to help the animal in breaking it down and getting all the nutrients out of it. And slowly but surely, that material then moves from the omasum into something called the abomasum, and that's the last chamber of the stomach. Now this is where real acidic digestion takes place, and the food is then broken down and eventually pass through the animal. Once all the plant material has gone through the entire digestive system, you're left with these small black pellets. But what's interesting is that you can actually see they fit into each other as they move through the digestive system. But it's really once you break these pellets open that you begin to see just how efficient this digestive system is. And when I break it open, I can see that the animal's been eating plant material, vegetation, trees, leaves, and grass. However, I can't see exactly which trees they were, or which grasses they were, and that just shows you how efficient this digestive system is. The food's been chewed at length, it's been digested at length, it's been fermented, it's been broken down by the acids within the stomach or the abomasum, and you end up with an efficiency of between 60 and 80 percent. So that means 60 to 80 percent of what this animal eats is actually assimilated by the body and used by the animal. That means that this animal has a lot more time to do what it would like. Next up, we're going to check the stark contrast between the hindgut fermenter and this, the ruminant. Now, the best way for me to show you the difference between a hindgut fermenter and a ruminant is to show you the difference. So you can see over here, as I was talking about earlier, here's our impala, a tiny little black ball, high efficiency, everything's been taken out of it that the animal can possibly get. And then in stark contrast, we have this big ball of goop, if you will. I mean, when it first comes out, it is just goop, and this has been dried by the sun, so it's quite a nice hard uh, ball of elephant dung. And immediately you can tell the difference between the hindgut fermenter and the ruminant. Now, the hindgut fermenter is something that's incredibly inefficient. Only about 20 to 40% of what an elephant eats or other hindgut fermenters eat is actually used and assimilated by the body. It's so drastic that you can actually dig around inside these balls. And I'm like, why not? You know, for good measure, let's break this one open. Now, before I do this, I should also mention that it's not always advisable to do these sort of things because you might be breaking into a micro ecosystem on the inside here. But it's fairly dry at the moment, and I know a lot of the insects are not out and about yet. So we're going to do it for science. So let's go ahead and break it open. Now you can see there's still a little bit of moisture in there, and it just shows you how well this is insulated. But immediately once we break it open, I start to see things like sticks. That's a twig over there that's been slightly chewed, mildly digested, and then passed out the other side. So straight away you can see one is very efficient and one is very inefficient. Now what the elephants favor and other hindgut fermenters favor is quantity over quality. 
And where their benefit comes in is that they're able to eat a varied amount of things. Right, many different trees, many different grasses, many different fruits and seeds and so on. Whereas the impala or the ruminants are quite limited in what they can feed on. All right, so quality over quantity, quantity over quality. And if we go back to that inefficiency, that 20 to 40% inefficiency, uh, you begin to realize, and it becomes quite easy to realize, I should rather say, just how elephants, or a big male elephant for instance, is able to consume about 300 kilograms of food a day. Anyway, that's just the tip of the iceberg as far as these digestive systems are concerned. There's a whole lot more information on how these things work, and of course there's blurred lines between some species, uh, and if you would like to ask more questions on these sort of things, please feel free to drop a comment below and I'll happily get back to you as soon as I can. Maybe if I could leave you with a last thought as well. These various digestive systems have led these animals to have to formulate a number of adaptions and a number of habits in order to better utilize their environment. So it just shows you how important a good digestive system is or how influential the various digestive systems are.